I know why you're here. You played Ape Escape on the PS1 way back in the day. And you're curious what the one on the PSP is like. The Ape Escape on the loose, to be exact. Well, I really don't know why you're here, because you probably haven't touched this thing in, like, a decade. So why are you here? Why? Why? Well, lucky for you, I took the time out of my life to review this game, and I'm proud to present to you Ape Escape on the Loose for the PlayStation Portable. Ape Escape on the Loose, also known as Saruge UP in Japan, is a port of the original Ape Escape released for the PlayStation 1 way back in 1999. Man, that was such a good year for gaming. We got Mario Party, we got Pokemon Snap, we got Super Smash Brothers. Such a good year for gaming. As a newcomer to the series, I'll be reviewing this game with no nostalgia goggles blinding me with childhood memories, which can happen all too often. But that being said, let's go ahead and start with the music and the sound. I enjoyed the music for the most part. It matched the situations and the levels pretty nicely. Some of the sounds, especially Spike's footsteps, can get annoying after a bit. There was one level that was big and difficult to figure out and I couldn't bear the music, but luckily the game does give you the option to turn it down and still enjoy the sound effects, which was nice. Right from the get-go, I liked the plot of this game. You play as a kid named Spike, and he and his friend Jake are headed to this professor's lab. When you arrive, a monkey named Spectre has tied up the professor and his assistant. Spectre somehow got his hands on this helmet that made him ultra-intelligent as well as evil. He also managed to give his army of monkeys helmets, which lets him take over their minds and control them. So the professor was working on a time machine, and this is what Spectre uses to send his ape army back in time to wreak havoc. It's your job to catch all the apes and save the course of history from being messed with, and to stop Spectre from taking over the world and space. The main goal of the game is to catch apes. Think of them as the stars or the moons in 3D Mario platformers, but of course the difference being that they will constantly try to evade your attempts at catching them once you find them. But other than that, you'll be exploring levels and trying to collect big coins with Spectre's face on them because the more you find, the more minigames will be unlocked. I'll get into minigames soon, but first let's get into some of the gameplay. The platforming is actually pretty fun most of the time. Unlike some of the other games for this console I'm looking at you, Death Jr. The game gives you a good variety of gadgets to help you in your quest to nab those apes. What I love is that the player will constantly have to switch gadgets to get certain tasks done. And the fact that you don't start off with all the gadgets gives the game a really good sense of character progression. There are elements in this game that gave me flashbacks of playing Mario 64 and Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I have to say, so far this feels a little bit like Mario 64 and I, I'm really liking it so far. If you're at all familiar with the PSP console, you should know that it was plagued by a lack of a second analog stick. So of course having a second stick to control the camera would have been amazing, but pressing the L button snaps the camera behind you which helps a lot. The gadgets aren't always fun to use. Catching monkeys underwater is not fun. <laughs> Controlling the RC car is also not fun. Son of a bitch. Your lightsaber does take some getting used to, but once mastered, it's pretty fun to use. The net you use to catch monkeys also has a bit of a learning curve. Oh, that's a monkey too. You have to get so doggone close, it's crazy. And then they kick your ass. Okay, you win. You are the superior monkey out of both monkeys. 
I suck at this? Why isn't it working? There we go. But after a while, you, again, you'll get used to this. The Whirly Doodle was also a game changer for vertical exploration and tough platforming sections. And the Swirly Doodle was fun to use as well. I was complaining at the start of the game that there was no sprinting, and this gadget actually allows you to run fast for a short amount of time. I thought most of them were fun and pretty unique. There aren't a ton of them, I want to say there was maybe five total. The difficulty level in this game can be a bit all over the place, especially the last section before the boss. There's a lot of really difficult platforming to get through. This is platforming madness. But back to the bosses, a lot of them have like a, a weak spot that you have to figure out where it's at. And I mean, it's not too hard to figure out. It's mostly just like a big giant green button on the vehicle or whatever the boss is. Some of the bosses, like this race car one, he was kind of annoying. Like he shoots these rockets that you can see and like as long as you're hugging that wall of tires, you're perfectly safe. But then he like charges you and it's very hard to avoid. I mean, even with the spinny swirly doodle, I mean, you can see I hit him right there, but even though these bosses were annoying at times, I mean, any good boss takes some learning and, you know, you have to play it to get used to it and then learn its moves and so forth. Overall, I gotta say, I kind of wished there were more in this game. Uh, they were kind of few and far between, and I hope there's more in the next games to come. I have to give my hats off to the level design. The puzzle solving was great and not very hard to figure out, and the way your gadgets are always needed for different tasks makes everything fun to figure out. Remember those coins with Spectre's head on them I mentioned? So if you collect 40 coins, all of the minigames will be unlocked. Yay, Gameception games. Everybody loves a game within a game, right? Maybe it's just me, but I'm not a very big fan of when games do this. The snowboarding one sucks. I hated it. It was hard to play through. The boxing one, I have to admit was pretty fun. You work your way up through the ranks and eventually fight Spectre. Then if you beat him, whatever this thing is, Jake Attack is just the same thing you were forced into playing in the actual game. It's a foot race against Jack and it's a pain in my ass. And finally the pinball one is a complete mess. The controls are terrible and it's not fun at all. I couldn't wait for this to be done to be honest. Can you tell I'm not a very big fan of these? My guess is that you'll play these once and move on with your life. I don't want to be too harsh on these, I mean, I had a little bit of fun playing them, but you're just not going to get a whole lot out of them. Like I said, they're probably a one-time playthrough deal, and then you'll probably be done. I don't want to discourage you from, you know, wanting to collect all the Spectre coins to unlock these uh, mini-games. I know personally, if I didn't unlock all of them, I would enjoy going back through the levels, collecting the Spectre coins, and unlocking the rest of them. I'm just saying, like, as, I don't know, the, the mini-games themselves just kind of suck, but I kind of like them in the way that they're something fun to unlock, so I didn't want to just completely sh all over them. I really enjoyed how the environments always felt fresh. This game aged very well graphics-wise. The textures look good for how old the game is. Each level has a nice theme and you won't likely get bored of the scenery in the levels. Everything just has a very vibrant, colorful look to it and I really like that. Even the level selection screen has a lot of detail when you're choosing your level. It shows like the whole map in a little miniature. It's really cool. Personally, during my playthrough, I didn't experience any frame rate issues or any lag or anything like that for, I don't think, the entire game. The character design was also top notch. A lot of the characters are likable and the design is very unique looking. That goes for a lot of the enemies too in this game. A lot of them have interesting designs. And just the way Spectre looks is really cool. He he plays the part of being an evil monkey very well, and he's always sitting in like his evil throne, and it just it just works. I really liked it.
So I beat this game in about 10 hours, but there's still another gadget to collect when you restart the first level after you beat the game. With the fact that I had over 70 monkeys still on the loose to capture, and a lot of Spectre coins to track down, and an arsenal of gadgets at my disposal this time to help me finish up these tasks, I would say there is a lot of replayability here. Not to mention, once you catch all of the monkeys, a final boss battle with Spectre will be unlocked, and you'll get a final cutscene as well. This game is absolutely worth your time. This is one of those games that I'm really glad I got to experience. I am seriously looking forward to playing some of the other games in this series. You should play this, I highly recommend it. So what'd you think of my review of Ape Escape on the Loose for the PlayStation Portable? I hope you enjoyed it. I This one was really fun to uh, just play and review. It pleasantly surprised me. I didn't expect it to be that fun. So yeah, th and thank you so much for making it this far in the video. If you're still watching, make sure you type something in the comments. Uh, just I usually say something random. Um, just type Sackboy in the comments, like from Little Big Planet, just to know, uh, just to let me know that you made it this far in the video. And with that being said, I will see you in the next one. Peace.